welcome to the next video. In this one, we'll, we'll, we will now begin to actually build something. So right now, we've got nothing. We have a sampler channel, and that's not going to be doing anything. So, by the way, this is what this is referred to as a channel. And when you click on it, you get the channel settings window for whatever object this is. You can have various different kinds of channels. Uh, a sampler channel is one where you are able to contain samples. So, in this particular video, I'm going to build a drum loop first. You don't have to start with drums, you can start with the chord progression or a bass line. And in fact, the next videos are going to be about that. So if you end up doing this yourself, you can kind of just interchange any of those steps in your own kind of order. So, to make a drum loop, we have to have drums. And there's a number of ways to do this. Actually, this is going to be a kind of a true thing about everything to do with FL is that there are a number of ways to do anything. I'm going to show you the way that I prefer doing it, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the only way or even the best way. Um, actually, I'll show you a couple of ways just so that you have an idea of what I'm talking about. So I have the sampler. I can either click on this folder here to actually bring us straight to the, to the Windows uh, Explorer window, and we can uh, go in here and find drums that we want. And then, ta-da, we have a kick. That's one way of doing that. And I see the samples actually in this window down here. There's a lot of things going on inside the channel samplings window. Channel settings window, Jesus. Um, I'm not going to get super in-depth into what it does. That'll be for the level two series, where I go into uh, way more in-depth into all the, the seriously advanced things that you can do with everything. I will, however, do enough to get you on the way to being able to sort of experiment yourself. And just to get you get you on your feet. That's what this level one course is about. Uh, so yes, we have, we have here a kick. Now, to sequence the kick, you work like you would in any sequencer. You see we have steps here. This is what this is referred to as sequencer steps. And if you click on a step, it enables it. Right click on it, it deletes it. Notice that when I'm doing that, it's, it's lighting up pattern one and, and taking away when I'm getting rid of it. A pattern is only engaged when there's something in it. You can go to all the patterns go to all of them that are already there. They are all present, all the way up to 999 patterns. I would be very impressed if you actually managed to use 999 patterns. You know, without just doing that on purpose. It's something that, you know, is reasonable. Actually, probably just even to do it on purpose, it'd probably still be very impressive. But, um, would before the, if there's no content in them, then it's not going to do anything. Now, you might be thinking, well, there is content. There's a kick. There's a kick drum sample. It's loaded in there. But that's not actually in the pattern. That's in the sequencer. The pattern itself is what's being is what is essentially the MIDI information that's that's utilizing whatever the channel is. So let's make a kick loop. Actually, let's bring this down to 128. House is pretty good. Now notice I hit play up here. I hit play up here. I could also hit play here. I could also hit spacebar. Notice that the, turning this off is actually pause and not stop. Stop will bring it to the beginning and pause will stop it where it is. That's the difference between that and that. But next to the play button, we have pattern and song. This will become important later. I just wanted to identify uh, for you that it's there. So now we have a kick. Uh, let's get something else. I'll show you another way to get samples uh, to get the rest of the samples. So let's get some the rest of the stuff. Now, if you remember in the, the file system that I was using here, we're in packs drums kicks that actually exists over here in the browser backs drums and there's kicks let's get a snare something like that's fine now from here there's a number of ways that i could actually put it in the playlist or the, the sequencer if i right clicked it we get a whole bunch of options open a new sample channel would get us essentially one of these for the, for the snare Open a new channel entirely. That's you know, that's that thing. It's still it'll still open it as a sample channel because it's a sample. Granulize the channel, slice the channel, slice the channel, open in the window shell menu. It'll essentially give you the right click menu as if you had clicked on the sample in the explorer. Oh, edit an audio editor will open it up inside uh, an Edison channel. And open in a pitch corrector will open it inside um, a new tone channel. New tone instance, it's actually an effect. Could also send it to the selected channel. So if I, if I have a sample here, I could actually right click and send it to that. So let's do open a new channel. Boop. 
And here we have a snare. Nice stuff. Let's get some hats. I like it. These two. So I could right click and open up in a channel of my choice, or I could actually click and drag either onto a channel to replace the sample that it has, or just onto the sequencer where it'll open up a new one. And now we've got a very basic drum loop. And we have discussed many ways in which we can get samples and load them into the sequencer. Now, uh, I will show you one thing that we can do to sequencer. I'm going to grab all of these guys. You can see I'm actually clicking and dragging here. That's what this is doing. I can also right click to add selections or take away selections individually. Or I could right click and uh, drag to either get rid of or add. I can also double click to either select all or deselect all. This is this is this is actually straight up. It just indicates I am selecting these channels. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to go to channels and group selected. It's going to ask me to give it a group name. Here's the group name thingy. I'm going to call it drums. And now we have two groups inside a sequence. We have unsorted where there's now nothing. This is where I was originally in unsorted and then drums. So now we have our, our very special selection for drums. Now, in the next video, I'm going to make a baseline pattern. We are now in pattern one. In fact, let's name this pattern. Drum loop one. We have named the pattern. We could also color it if I felt like it, but I don't right now, so I'm not going to. All right, next video, baseline.